interested in the concept, um, and we're going to talk about how it actually went in execution, too. So I decided to structure the semester around the concept of collaboratively writing a textbook. As a group, we discuss what we would like to see in a teaching creative writing textbook, and together we discuss what would be essential in individual chapters and overall. This was a semester-long project. I introduced it in the first week, and, and we discussed throughout the semester what we were going to be doing and how we were going to do it. Um, students submitted proposals for the chapters they would like. Uh, we workshopped some of those chapters, especially toward the end of the semester. We did a lot of workshopping. I wanted to teach this in the way that I teach creative writing so that I'm able to model the, the type of creative writing teaching that I'm doing and, and sort of make that example, but it's also a teaching class. So it felt like kind of an, an interesting dynamic that I got to, to figure out since this was the first time I taught it. Um, we had discussions on, the chap on, on some of those chapters on Canvas and in class. Ultimately, we were able to write a 16 chapter textbook. Um, I do not have the full collection together yet in the form in which I have gone through and edited all of it and got it cohesively connected. So I'm, that's why you haven't gotten it yet. That would make sense. Um, we will. It's still something that I want to get. I want to have it available to them. I want to make sure that we've all created an artifact that can work for, for what they've done. And, and if I ever do this project again, I think it's going to be completely different because I'm going to have different needs and different personalities based on what we had. So here's why we did it. If you were wondering, all last semester why exactly we did this. Um, I wanted ownership for students of the project. I wanted the students to feel empowered by their contribution. I wanted real world application so that we were creating a vital document with real world meaning. I wanted to have flexibility uh, within the class. Um, because I had so many different types of students, I wanted to make sure that the, the semester-long project had flexibility that was going to help them um, survive. So if I was asking everybody to write a deep pedagogical paper, um, I think some people would do great, and others would have been really mad at me. Um, so we had to figure out ways that it was going to benefit everyone's um, situation and needs. Um, the topics were all student-generated. Though when some students were struggling for what topics they wanted, I helped them and we helped each other on that. And they could write on topics they felt comfortable with. It played off of that academic diversity of the students. Um, before I go to the next slide, if I can talk to you, what did you think when I first introduced this concept to you? Cool. <laughs> Neat. Um, what did you think when I first introduced this concept, um, um, Brittany? I was excited. I. Um, so my major is not in teaching at all, it's in creative writing. Um, so I wanted to, to write the book, it was, it was exciting. Knowing who was in the class as well also helped get the excitement out. Of, of the classmates, yeah. so not just me. Well, and we, we, I took it because of you, but then when I found out who else was in there. Good, was, good, and um, we had worked together, what, t once before, twice before? This class? It's I think twice. 17 times before? 17 times. <laughs> it feels like and, and each of us had, had, each of these two students had worked with me multiple times prior to this. Mm -hmm. And so you had an understanding of my teaching style. And I wanted, as I said before, to kind of keep that organic because that's how I teach creative writing, even though we were doing something different. So you were excited. Were you concerned at all about having to write something in this very teaching centric way? I was not concerned until the very first time that we met in class because I was like, what did I get myself into? Like, I felt so inadequate, honestly, because okay. I felt like who am I to tell people how to teach when I am not a teacher or I am not going to school to become a teacher? So I kind of approached it in the, what would I want out of a creative writing class? And okay. What would I want from my teacher? Okay. Well, we'll talk as we go on about whether or not I, that you got more comfortable as that went on. Because that was something I was concerned with, with a few people that you were in, in your situation too. So talk about your background, Natalie. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> she was close enough, hopefully, to. Okay. Here. <laughs> okay, um, so my background is I am an English teaching secondary ed student, and so to answer some of the questions that you've already asked Brittany, I went in really excited because I just love to teach, and so for me sitting down and writing something about teaching some aspect of creative writing, which I absolutely love creative writing, was exhilarating to me. And the first time I sat down to do it is when I felt kind of overwhelmed initially. Because I'm like, oh boy, I have to write a whole chapter about character development and voice. 
I'm like, how am I going to do this? Like, how would I actually teach it? And so then I sat down and I started breaking it down. And I think I'm pretty organized. And so that kind of helped with me. But <laughs> yeah, I was super excited okay. when, we, when I found out we we're going to do that. Because it does make you feel like this is something I can actually use in the future. So I'll take my mic back. Um, yeah, that was one of the goals. I wanted everyone to feel like there was benefit to this, that there was a reason for us to be working toward this. Um, what I wanted to include here, we're not going to read through the entire table of contents, but I wanted to put it up here just to kind of give you a sense of what this thing ended up looking like. We worked together. I went in with no real preconceptions of what the book was going to be structured like. I had some ideas, but I wanted this to be something that I was facilitating that they were doing. And when I gestured to them, they'd think of 14 other people too. Um, and so what we came up with was a book that was set up in different parts, essentially, that, that first focused on the individual genres. I think I kind of came in and strong-armed you on what genres we were going to look at. I, I wanted to make sure we had all four of the major creative writing genres. And then I let individual students in this first part pick which one they wanted um, and pick which one they wanted to get into. Um, the two students we have here picked um, things outside of this category, if I'm remembering all the way back a couple of months ago. Um, but I wanted to start off with introductory type material. It had to be different than a standard creative writing class textbook because this wasn't to teach, this wasn't to learn creative writing, this was to teach it. So I had to kind of ask students to think in a way that they normally don't think. Um, and I think Brittany's a really good example of this because when you think of creative writing, you're thinking of how to do it yourself. Um, and so to ask you to kind of step outside of that um, is kind of a unique situation, I think. Um, and, and so these four chapters kind of set that up. And then I had chapters that dealt with sort of overviews of, of creative writing that got into more specific topics but weren't necessarily looking at the individual genres in more detail, which the next section we're going to see did. But you can see how creative and how different these different chapters get. Because um, I had students that said, you know, I had one student who wanted to talk about breaking the rules of creative writing. That turned out to be chapter nine. Um, so he had a very unique idea on what he wanted to explore and what he wanted to do, and that was not something that I was remotely thinking about. We talked about in class discussions what the most important needs were to get across to a class. Um, this, was, this was introduced right away, um, which evidently both was exhilarating and terrifying to the students based on the testimony I've got here. Um, but we wanted to spend a lot of time in class, I wanted to spend a lot of time, and they seem to too, talking about what the most important things to learn about creative writing would be. And so we spent a lot of time going into how, how to make students feel comfortable. Um, in my creative writing classrooms, there's nothing more important than that. Um, if I've got a, a group of students who are all tense and all stressed out and think everybody else in the class hates them, we're not necessarily going to make great creative work. We've, we've got to kind of work toward creating that level of comfort. And so we talked in great detail about how we do that. And one of the students took on that, that chapter. A lot of this was based on research that students did. I let it be extremely self-guided. Um, maybe to a fault, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. This was a 4,000 level class, so I felt very comfortable with letting students kind of dictate how they were going to do things. Um, and, and I think that that ended up feeling like maybe I gave you too much rope at various points because as the semester went on, some students were like panicking about getting things done. Um, to me, a 20 page project, and that's what I asked for, 20 pages for each chapter, uh, over the course of the semester for a 4,000 level class, it's pretty reasonable. Um, it, we'll see if students thought that <laughs> as time went on. Um, but again, these are the basic topics that we had for this section, and then we got into more specifics, things that were dealing with um, particular aspects of each genre. So what, what did you do, uh, Natalie? Or what, ca what chapter did you have? I have chapter 10, mm -hmm. character development and voice and fiction. So okay, that's it. good. Um, I kind of, and why did you choose that? Well, I like to write creatively, and I write novels in my spare time. Not spare time, everyone. <laughs> spare time, just when she doesn't have anything else going on. <laughs> like Natalie will write a novel. <laughs> and so I felt pretty comfortable with character development, and I also did a lot of theater. And so in theater, I had to do like, character sketches and kind of do backstories of characters. And so for me, that's kind of where I 
took it from is from just personal experience and interest as well. Okay. Um, so you wanted to take this on because you felt like you had something to share. I think some people took on chapters because they felt they were weak points. And some people took on chapters because they had no idea what the hell to do. And then I told them. Um, but in, in this case, it felt, and that was the last resort. Um, but in this case, it felt like you had knowledge in this area and you wanted to kind of push forward with that. Yes, because I felt like I had something to offer, but it's also something as a secondary teacher that I would want to teach my students. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of characters, to me, just seem kind of flat and not necessarily rounded. And character development is what changes that flat line to a round circle. So I just kind of felt like, for me, that's kind of where I would start teaching. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons Good. why. Good. Um, and again, you can see how we set this up. I have a fiction section, poetry section. I, students started to propose ideas. I didn't really want to say no too much, and I don't think I did. Um, so if I have a student that was dealing with something like teaching imagery to elementary school students, it's in. We're gonna figure out a way to make that work because I wanted them to follow on what they felt. And just like what you're saying, how can I say no to that when you're talking about the, the thing that you would want to learn when you're going into this and the things that you would want? Um, so I, I, the, the chapters end up feeling a little disjointed at times in this area, but I connected them through, through the overall genres. Um, then we had three nonfiction sections. Um, again, I just wanted you to kind of take a look at, at what we had in each of these. Um, oh, we have a lot of chapter 16s. So I've got to fix that. <laughs> um, it's a unique book with three chapter 16s. <laughs> I'm very scared of the number 17 and 18. I avoided them altogether. Um, which chapter 16 did you write? Um, the, first one. <laughs> the first one. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, understanding yes. drama by understanding genre and subgenre. Yes. Yes. Um, why did you write about that? Because you said that I should. <laughs> I, I believe there was more to the conversation than that. Um, I honestly had no idea what to write um, about. And so you posted some suggestions of based on what I like. Um, and so I was basically a person I love plays, I love going to them. Um, everything about them, I've read, I've read a lot of them. And so um, you suggested that I do something about the language of plays. And so I took um, some genres that are taught in school. The main one being Shakespeare. And this is kind of where I, I've never read Shakespeare before. I took a Shakespeare class and all we did was watch movies. So I haven't read any Shakespeare. So this, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We we have to talk about this later. Let's let's get together and discuss this. Go ahead. Uh, so I was like, okay, Shakespeare, it's hard to understand, and so I felt kind of. Oh. <laughs> um. So, um, I kind of approached it in the well. Okay, how do I make it accessible to me? Because this is me a person reading it for the first time. And so I took, you know, um, two, I took a, a tragedy, and then I took a comedy, and then I took a, a loved one. And I just kind of based it on, you know, if you were in elementary school, what would you do, and so on and so forth. Good. So. Good. so as you can see, I, I wanted, I encouraged the students to kind of focus in on the level of teaching that they wanted to. You're seeing a wide variety of some things that are geared toward secondary, some things that are geared toward different audiences. Um, that was important to me, again, to make sure that this was something that they had ownership of, that this was something that they would feel comfortable with. So I wanted to share a few of the student responses that I have. Um, I'll start with some that are a little more positive, and then we'll look at some that were, were more critical and kind of what I've learned from this. Again, this is the first time I taught this course. And so I wanted to try this approach for it. I am anticipating trying the textbook idea again in the spring, if you're OK with that. I want to get permission from those who wrote my first textbook first. Um, but here are some of the responses that I got. Uh, the collaborative text was a great idea. It really helped us to think of how we would teach creative writing at different age levels and how we can share a passion for writing. Yes, that's what I'm looking for, right? That the, the, the students were buying into it. Um, it felt like. There was a lot of selling on my part in the early stages to make sure that this felt like something that was worth doing. A lot of my teaching ends up, especially when I do sort of odd projects, a lot of convincing of the students on the worthwhile aspects of this project. It's nice to see comments like this because I think that means it's working, at least for some, somebody. 
I like creating potential assignments for a classroom based on the methods and ideologies we learned in class. I also spent time um, asking students on Canvas to turn in project ideas and, and teaching lesson plans for things that they might do based on certain things that we discussed. It was a hybrid class. So we met every other week. And on those off weeks, um, at least off in terms of our meeting, um, we would then discuss things on Canvas. And a lot of the times we would have these lesson plan type ideas that were terrific. Again, I, I gave very uh, intense amounts of freedom to students. And so I was kind of letting them dictate how things were going from there. Um, I felt like that was appropriate for a 4,000 level class, and we'll talk about that as we go. Um, it was also a, it was a broadcast class, so I was meeting them. Virtually all the students were coming from different locations. I believe I had four in Price with me, and then I had, uh, what about eight, nine in Logan? There were quite a few of you. Um, so, so that also added to the challenge, because we wanted to make sure we knew each other and could trust each other on all of the workshopping, but it becomes a little challenging with the broadcast. Fortunately, with this class, so many of us had worked together before. There were very few people I didn't know that were in the class, and I think that's probably the same for you, that it felt comfortable right away. And so we'll hopefully see that as we go on. It was great to work with the other students on the term project. It was an environment I found to be very educational with learning from both the teacher and the other students. So again, that collaborative aspect was important, and it felt like something a lot of people valued. Um, so here are the, the, the suggestions, we'll call them, of, of things that students had. And I want to talk about those and maybe get your feedback. And if you wrote any of these, you don't have to say. Um, <laughs> Writing a whole textbook chapter is daunting and time consuming. I wish I had better understanding of what was required of me earlier in the semester. Maybe if there had been multiple due dates along the way, I would have been more encouraged to work on the chapter more often than I did. Um, so my feeling on this is I think this is something that's worthwhile to consider. Um, I, I, let the, I let the students have a lot of freedom on that. I, I had students turn in drafts. I had students workshop drafts. I was very kind of lax on actual due dates until the thing was due at the end. So I think that that's pretty valid. Um, I felt like I made an, a pretty clear understanding of what was required early, but I can work on that too to, to make sure of that. And, and again, you guys can feel free to, you've already gotten graded on this class, so you can feel free to add whatever you need to. I, I would like to have been provided with a little more information or ideas for teaching in the classroom. The class discussions are great, and I learned a lot from my peers, but I would have liked to have been given a little more in the specific area from the instructor. I was relying a lot on the experience of my students, since a lot of them were taking teaching pedagogy classes, and I wanted mine to feel like a creative writing class with that aspect, as opposed to a teaching class with a creative writing aspect. Um, so to me, I felt like there were really good discussions that were being provided from some of the students, especially some who had a lot of great experience with this. Um, but I think this is an important thing for me to learn from, too. Um, and this last one, I think, is important, too. I had a hard time writing about teaching creative writing because I'm not going into teaching. I wish the chapters had a smaller page count so those that struggled through it didn't have to write as much. I'm not going to worry about that last part. But because, like I said, I think the, the page count was reasonable for the amount of time that we had to work on it. But, but it also made me think a lot about the teaching creative writing if I'm not going into teaching. And you seem like the right person to ask about this here. Um, what do you think we could have done to have helped the, the students and, and you to a degree um, kind of transition into the creative writing interest to, to helping with that teaching aspect? Is that a fair question for you? Um, I think it's a fair question. I'm trying to figure out how to answer it. Because um, I, I don't think it was unreasonable, um, and mainly because it, pedagogy is a weakness of mine. And if I ever decide to become a teacher in the future, I'm going to need to know this stuff. Sure. And so it was really good to have the mix of, of classmates that weren't going into it. Um, it was a little daunting, so I could see how they would have wanted a smaller count, because, sure, yeah, possible. but, um, so, I don't know, I thought it was, I got more comfortable as I went along, because, um, because we turned in those drafts, we got feedback throughout the entire semester, and that's one thing that really helped me, actually, was, um, was to get that also with Natalie. <laughs> Um, I think being able to have classmates that are going to this um, be able to look at it and see, okay, well, does this need more pedagogy? Okay, well, what do the like what do people that are more comfortable with that think? Um, and so being able to have that actually got me through a lot of the anxiety that I was having. 
I think that um, for, for me, it was important to kind of learn from each other in this regard because I have extensive pedagogical experience with teaching college composition and creative writing. I'm perfectly qualified to have taught this class, just so you know. Um, but I don't have a ton of background in, in like um, K-12 pedagogy specifically. Um, so it was important to have that background from people who are teaching that. Um, so I found that to be really interesting. Do you have anything to add to this conversation? You usually oh. do. <laughs> <laughs> I do talk a lot, if you've ever had me as a student. <laughs> um, I think one thing that was beneficial for everyone was the workshop. I don't know if you're going to talk about that in detail any further, but I think having all of us come together as we were going through our sections really helped because even though I'm going into secondary ed teaching and I've had more classes than Brittany in regards to teaching, it was good to hear an outsider's view as well that's not specific to teaching in English because it kind of opens up your perspective. And I also think it was helpful to have teachers in there as well because some of them were actually teaching. They were going through the alternative path through licensure and they were already teaching. And so it was good to get their experience as well of what they know works with their students and what wouldn't work with their students. So I think that helped as well. But Brittany and I exchanged a lot of rough drafts together and revised before we actually had ours workshopped. I didn't know if you knew that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not shocked. <laughs> Um, but, but I think to talk about the workshop aspect, it, as I said, it was important for me to have this class feel like a creative writing class. And in a creative writing class, we emphasize workshop, where students all um, exchange work. One person is critiqued, everyone else gives their positive and then more suggestive. We don't talk about weaknesses. It's a creative writing class. There are opportunities for growth. That's so much more positive. Um, and so we, I wanted to do that here. And, and I wanted to introduce the concept. We talked about workshopping as the teacher early on, and then we applied those, those elements as we got into the class in those later stages. I'm glad that was something that felt beneficial, because uh, that was an important aspect of what we were doing to me. So, so that's the end of that. I'm curious if anybody has any questions about the process and what we did here, um, so that we can kind of go back and forth. Yes, sir. Uh, I've not gotten the book all together. What the plan for the book was is to maybe contact the library here and see if they'd be able to have that on um, uh, digitally produced for us. I want to make sure I've got it available for, for these folks who were in the class for sure, but, but also for, the, for anybody who'd want to see it. So that's definitely a plan. Um, I hoped to be able to get that through the summer. I, I worked on it a bit, but I don't quite have it done. Now I'm being the editor. And editors take forever. So, so we, we, we've got to make sure we get that. But, but that's great. There's interest. Hey, there's interest. Good. Thank you, sir. Um, go ahead. Um, Our, our workshop was kind of serving as our peer review, and we had a couple of different levels of that. We did it through Canvas discussions, and we did it in class. Um, and I think by the end, we got virtually everybody in the class um, talked to have their pieces discussed during, during class. The last several weeks of our in-class discussions were almost entirely workshop slash peer review. I know in, in my comp classes, we'll call them peer review. Here, we call them workshops. I have no idea why we, we work so hard to create those distinctions. Um, so we did a lot of it. Um, they got feedback from me. We had, I had conferences. Again, it was a broadcast class, so I wasn't able to meet with everyone in person all the time. But we had phone meetings, and, and whenever anybody needed anything, I was pretty quick to be able to get back. So yeah, that was going to be important. I wanted them to feel investment in each other's. Um, and I feel like there was a lot of good back and forth. Those, those peer review um, workshop sessions were terrific because it really felt like you cared about what the others were doing, which is what I wanted. We wanted to create that investment. Did they you were. feel that? I did. Um, I, it was extremely beneficial for me, as, like, especially since I was one of the first ones to be peer reviewed. Um, so, <laughs> well, I volunteered. I volunteered. Volunteered to be one of the first because nobody else wants to do it. So um, I didn't really care, but it helped me a to start thinking about the direction that I wanted to go in and to get feedback from the people that are in my situation um, as well as the teacher. And so it was very beneficial for me. Yeah, it was important for me to emphasize the the individual individuality of the people because you know you were self conscious about the fact that you didn't have that much teaching experience. There were people who were self-conscious about the fact they had teaching experience, but not the creative writing background. Everybody was wildly self-conscious, just, just so you know. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I added value to everybody so that everybody felt that. And I think that's something I can work on more as we do this again, so that you know how important that one perspective that you have is, even if you're kind of second guessing how, how important it is. So I think that makes sense. Jessica.
Yes. The, this was all independent research. So uh, we, we had reading that I did, uh, that I assigned over the first several weeks that we would have. There wasn't a ton. I mean, most of the reading that we had was, was student produced. Um, so everybody was reading each other's work by the end. Um, I, I, was, I kind of left everything as open as possible because I didn't really know how this was going to go. Um, so I had assignments that we had at the beginning, and then at the end we were just doing what, what reading what, what everybody else was doing, which I think worked okay. Um, I think everybody ended up with a lot of knowledge about a lot of subjects. Subjects, um, which worked well, and the, the the workshop conversations were terrific. So I know people were invested and involved. What else? Yes. So do you think there were um, any gaps in the pedagogy or the books that you might feel if you were going to go for like publisher professionals that you wanted to fill? Probably. Um, I think that there are inevitably inevitably gaps when we are getting so specific. You know, when I've got a chapter that's about specifically teaching imagery to elementary school level students in poetry, obviously I'm going to have gaps if, if I don't have another chapter that's about something similar to that. Um, I think that's part of the charm of what we ended up with, is that they've got these really specific things that are in the book that end up feeling like it, it all fits because of how wildly specific some of those points are. Um, assuredly, if I was working on this to create like an all comprehensive text, there'd be things that we'd need. But we wanted to make sure that we had like those four chapters that identified the four genres um, to make sure that we had everything kind of covered from there, that we weren't going to miss any of the really basic things. And then we can kind of go from that point. Does that, is that good? OK. How much time do I have left? Three minutes. Three minutes. Does anybody have a, a question that'll take one minute and then we can respond in two? I'm kidding. So, is there any consideration of like, this idea that you could take, um, have future students either write their own books or have them write their own books? I've thought about that. And, and I, I, I've kind of gone, and I'm, I haven't committed anything to the, the, the syllabus for what I'm going to do in, in the spring of 2020. Um, but I have wondered if, I, my instinct now is to just kind of start from scratch and see how different it goes, almost as an experiment for me. And if you know anybody in that class, tell them nothing. Um, but, but I think that it might be interesting as we go on to, to use some of those chapters maybe and to kind of help them have a basis of, of what we can do. Um, I, I think that's an interesting idea. And I, I wouldn't want the original writers to feel like their work is, is kind of being ex used in some other way that they didn't think. But, but I like the idea of figuring out ways of making this better, sort of like a, a long-term project of, of revision. And we got a chapter on that, too. Uh, maybe time for one more? Well, maybe that's a question that I would have for them. If future students were to take your work and refine it and delete your precious words and extend, how would you get to that? OK. Well, <laughs> um, my chapter was pretty detailed, so I already know that people would take stuff out of my chapter. <laughs> I, I think I had 29 pages is what I ended up with, and we were only required to do 20. So I think I would be okay with it because everyone has different ideas. So honestly, if somebody thought it would be better to teach it a different way, more power to them. So, but if I give them a good, you know, skeletal structure for them to start with and give them an idea, I think that's great too. But for me and what I did, I think it's beneficial for me. And so then it takes on sort of a wiki type personality, which is different than what I intended. It's kind of an interesting concept of writing. Um, I think, <laughs> last word. Um, I don't think I'd have a problem with it just because the needs of teachers, it, it evolves as, as time goes on. And so what teachers might need now might not be what they need in five years. And so if I'm going to, um, I would want teachers to have the best material. So if somebody can take what I wrote and refine it and make it better for uh, that time, then awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, thank you for, for helping us understand our project.